Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here. You know, belief is a wonderful thing. I mean, it can serve all kinds of purposes. And there's one thing, only one thing perhaps, that's more powerful than belief. And that is knowledge. I think about me, a black person. And I know what black people have gone through familiar with the history somewhat. And I hear some black people say that they are so committed to revenge blacks that they their number one concern is to see justice done for blacks. And I've heard, you know, different uh, attitudes about that. And that's a strong thing. You think about what is life about. I mean, sometimes you do. I do. And I've concluded that in life, I've experienced love. And I've experienced hate. And if I had to choose, and I do choose, I choose love. Then what do I base this love on? This love has to do with an effect on me personally that causes me to be satisfied with life. That is what love represents to me. And it's not just limited to me. Because in my understanding of love and, a, and, uh, and, and for what love really is, I have been led to go beyond a belief to a knowledge that assures me about love. And that is very significant in the way I talk, the way I approach life, at least the way I want to. So when I see a black person suffering, and I got the wherewithal to end that suffering, or to play a part in that ending that suffering, probably one of the first things that crossed my mind is a white person in that same position. And I see myself as that white person. And I know, I know what I want, what I desire, what I crave at that moment because I just got through craving that as a black person. And it's the same identical thing. Help somebody come to my rescue. If I know I need it, I beg, I plead. And if I don't know I need it, my, my, Thank you. And so when I think about that, that gives me an understanding that it is not just about black people. That it's about all of us, white people as well. And when I can conclude that that is a better way of living, a better way of life, then I have to think that it must be spread to all Americans. Love will not be restricted to just black and white but to all Americans. And if love won't be restricted to just black and white, it won't be restricted just to all Americans. It must be afforded to all foreigners as well. And then that brings me to the understanding that we as human beings are all one. Really, we are all one. Made of the same stuff. Require the same things for existence. And then I think about all of our being here, but not only that, because the belief thing has been changed to knowledge. I see the resources of the earth, those things that are used to do the things that we as people have done, and they are made available to us without we as human beings having anything to do with those particular resources. 
So those resources are a given, just as the earth is a given, as we the people are a given. And our needs, wants, and desires are a given. And they must be dealt with. And then this love says, how do we deal with a situation like this? Where all of us, all of us, human beings, wherever we are on this earth, requires the same things for survival, food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation, infrastructure, and all of the things that we can imagine. How can we, the people, assure that all of these things are meant for us from a resource that's been given to us? And the simplest way to see this is to have everyone engage in the process, in the process of creation. In other words, everybody got a job, everybody got a career, but they choose this career and they choose the career that gives them the greatest joy. And in doing it, everything else just become cream on the top. I say this often because to know who you are, to know why you are, and to be that, what else could be anything more exciting? And you never have to worry about any of those things. You have peace and prosperity and freedom. And all of this comes because you, the people, have decided that now you are not going to be governed by those that divide us, by those who tell us why we are so much greater than others. No, we're going to realize that our greatness is in our oneness, in our unity, in our understanding that there's a power. And this is why I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, when you believe, and I'm talking about anything, all it takes to really change you is something else for you to believe in that sounds better or for some reason motivates you. It jumps around. But for you to know, then belief is gone. So what I'm basically saying to you as a brother, I'm saying to all of you, yes, we believe in something. All of us believe in something. And we can look around us wherever we are. And we can see the value of that which we believe in by based upon our environment based upon our situations in life. That is an indicator. That is a thermometer. But then I come to tell you about something that I know about. Not believe, but know. And that there is a God. And I know that <clears throat> the God isn't a man, white or black, American or otherwise. It's a power that we can't see can't touch, can't feel, <clears throat> excuse me, but the evidence of the God is there. Now, many of you have heard, you've read books, you've gone to studies and so on and so forth to talk about a higher power. And for some strange reason, depending upon when you started or how you have had to deal with life, it brought you to an understanding to make those uh, teachings a, a firm belief. But those beliefs, my friends, have not been able to eradicate the problems of our lives. Those beliefs exist because it permits the things that happen every day to continue to happen. But to know the truth, to know that you were put here to live as one body, to live as one body, that is every last one of us serving one another in a capacity that is needed, wanted, and desired to fulfill our God-given purpose of creation here on this earth and not to be led by some blind, ambitious crew. Whether it's a, a, a Republican or a Democrat or conservative or liberal, whether it's an American or some other, on the threat of a bomb or whatever, no, the truth says that there is a God and we exist by the power of a God. And in this world and in any other world as I can see it, 
God is still God. And God can do, will do what others cannot do. I know that for a fact. What is God going to do? That I don't know. But I got to give God faith. Why? Because it's God. And I just thought I'd share that with you on this good, wonderful day. I want to thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. But it doesn't do a thing if it doesn't bring us closer together. If it doesn't take human beings in this country, human beings in that country, where people are running from, if we, if we can't see ourselves as one and teach one another the basic essentials that brightens up the day of life, then we're wasting our time. And we don't have time to waste. You see, this is what we call sunset in wisdom. So what I'm asking is that we just, in our prime, in our youth, let's do this now so you can enjoy it, so that you can live now. Thank you.